Hi, my name is Kelsey Gore, and this is my video explanation of my concept map. So I'm going to move this closer so we can see. Okay, here we go. So my concept map all starts with DNA. So off of DNA, a lot of things are happening. You have components of DNA, which are carbohydrate. You have a basic unit of DNA, which is a nucleotide. And then you also have a nucleic acid, which is a building block of DNA. So we're going to start with the carbohydrate and move from there. So carbohydrates have five things, five definitions that I figured could connect to them, uh, back to them easily. First one would be a polysaccharide. It's a long chain of a carbohydrate. Next would be a monosaccharide, and it's the simplest unit of a carbohydrate. Sugars are a simple group of carbohydrates, and glycerol is an intermediate of a carbohydrate. Lastly, I have glycolipid. So when you have a lipid connected to a, uh, a, a lipid connected to a carbohydrate group, it's considered a glycolipid. So that's kind of where those three intersect the best. Um, from a lipid, you have a phospholipid. Uh, it's basically a lipid with a phosphate group, so pretty simple there. And then you also have a fatty acid, which is the building block of a lipid. From your fatty acid, you can either have a saturated fat or unsaturated fat. The only difference between the two is one's a single bond and one's a double bond. Um, and the difference between the two are just the number of bonds, clearly. So going back to DNA, if we go down to nucleic acid, nucleic acid is also connected to a nucleotide because you need a nucleic acid, a nucleotide to create a nucleic acid. Um, and from a nucleotide, you have a phosphate group in each nucleotide, and then phosphate group, when connected to a carbon, uh, creates DNA. So when you have phosphate group and carbon, they help create DNA. So Organic chemistry and carbon are connected because organic chemistry is clearly all about carbon. So that's where that falls in. And then from carbon, you, it's a key element to amino acids where our chain gets a little bit bigger over here. So going back to carbon to amino acids, it's a key element. Also carbon and oxygen, when they're connected a double bond to a single oxygen, you have a carboxyl group. So that's also where oxygen and carbon connect as well. Below that, you have a carbolic acid. So this occurs in amino acids, so that's where that connection ends. Um, but a carbolic acid also contains a carboxyl group, so it kind of connects back through all three. There's multiple connections there. Oxygen, again, is another key element of an amino acid. Nitrogen is another key element of an amino acid. And then you have sulfadryl group, which is found in cysteine, which is a part of an amino acid as well. So there's that connection. And then last, you have hydrogen, which is another key element um, in a, amino acids. Hydrogen is also connected to a sulfdriol group because you need hydrogen bonds to make this. So I thought that was pretty interesting too. So off of hydrogen, we have two different uh, ways to go. So we'll go up this way first. So uh, hydrogen and pH are connected because pH stands for potential of hydrogen. So that's kind of where I put that connection together. Um, in pH, you have an acid and a base. So a base is a uh, pH with a base is greater than seven and acid is less than seven. So their numbers kind of are determined off of that. So that's how they're connection connected. Uh, a base and an acid together make a salt. Which it's a neutralized reaction between the two. And then also a base and an acid create chloride. So it maintains the balance of all body fluids between the both of them. So going back down through hydrogen, we're going to go the opposite way now. So we have a hydrogen bond, which is clearly just a chemical bond of hydrogen. So anything with bonds related, uh, you'll have that bond. So from hydrogen bond, we have the hydrogen bond network of water. Uh, that's a dynamic attraction of water, and that's how those two are connected. Um, and then from there, I went to the different types of bonds and molecules. So, of course, types of bonds, hydrogen bond would be connected to that because it's the water bond. Uh, you have an ionic bond, which is a bond with opposite charged ions. You have a co polar covalent bond, which uh, if coming through here, all these next few bonds are all going to connect to our electrons. So I just wanted to make that clear. Uh, because a polar covalent bond is a, where electrons are shared unequally in the bond, and a nonpolar covalent bond is when electrons are shared equally between the bonds. So see both going back to electrons. And then you also have a double covalent bond, which is two pairs of electrons shared, and then a triple covalent bond, which is a bond with six electrons shared, um, which leads us to electrons. All that brought us to electrons. So see there's that big connection there. 
So from electrons, there's again multiple ways. We're going to start here to the left. So you have electron donors, so that's when uh, electrons are donated to another element. Um, then you have an electron acceptor, which they're connected because sometimes electron acceptors receive electrons from electron donors. And then you also have redox. So both happen, uh, redox or uh, oxidation happens when either an electron is donated or accepted. So it happens both ways. Um, and basically redox is the transfer of electrons. So that's kind of where that's just all one big connection with what's going on. So from electrons, we're going to go down. So we have a nucleus. So electrons float around the nucleus, which we all know that. And from the nucleus, we've got a lot of different connections. So I'm going to kind of try to slow it down a little bit here. So from the nucleus, it tells us the charge of our atomic number. With our atomic number, it tells us the protons tell us the number in the nucleus. So our atomic number tells us how many proton numbers we have in the nucleus as well. So from protons, we can go to neutrons, which both are in the nucleus. That's where they're connected. And you go back to nucleus because clearly it's inside the nucleus. So I'm going to head back this way and towards electrons. So from the nucleus, you have electron shells, which orbit the nucleus. And electrons are also followed by electron shells. If you go straight up again, you have valence electrons, which uh, are in the outer shells of electron shells. And again, it's the outer shell of electrons. So there's that connection, kind of another triple connection there. Uh, electron shells are connected to our atoms as well because atoms, uh, electron shells determines the chemical properties of an atom. So that was pretty interesting too. And then atom and nucleus are connected together because the nucleus is the center of the atom. So from atom we have an element. So multiple atoms create an element. From element we're going to go this way. We're going to go down to atomic weight. So atomic weight and element connect because it's the weighted average of the different isotopes in the element. So that's kind of where that number comes from. From atomic weight, we have molecular weight, and that's the average weight of the atomic uh, weight. And then you have a Dalton, which is the standard unit of atomic weight. So we'll go back down. So atomic weight and protons are connected because the number of protons in the nucleus plus the neutrons uh, help give you that atomic weight number. Whereas neutrons, well, and same here, just showing the connection again. New, number in the nucleus with protons gives you atomic weight. Um, of course, these are connected because they're both in the nucleus. So nucleus and atomic weight are connected because they're also called the nucleus number. Um, the atomic weight just basically tells you what that number is in the nucleus of your protons and neutrons. So it's just a triple, triple connection. And then you see I have one last big connection up here for between electrons and atoms because electrons are found in the shells of atom, which we already determined here as well. So I feel like I hit all the major points. Um, I know it's kind of backwards. My fiancé is out of town, and I live alone with my two dogs. So I promise you the next one will be a million times better. But it was just me and my computer today. So there was my explanation.